Welcome everybody to Wu University's exciting event on getting pristine with scleral hygiene. I am your host, Dr. Stephanie Wu. And thank you so much to Contamac for supporting this event with an unrestricted educational grant. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for this evening, Dr. Karen Lee. Dr. Lee received her Doctor of Optometry degree from Indiana University School of Optometry. And then she completed a cornea and contact lens residency at the Southern California College of Optometry. Prior to joining the University of Houston as a clinical assistant professor, Dr. Lee served as the director of specialty contact lens clinic at the University of California, San Francisco. In her free time, she enjoys exploring Houston with her husband and son and is expecting another little baby boy in early June. She is also a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry, the past president of the Scleral Lens Society and a GPLI advisory board member. And uh, when we were figuring out for the best person for this topic, I immediately thought of, of Dr. Lee She's a really, really good friend of mine, and she is, is so brilliant. She has beautiful presentations, and I am super excited about this topic. So thank you, Dr. Lee, for being with us, and take it away. Thank you, Steph. That's such a kind introduction. I think the hormones are like making me tear up. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, thank you, everybody who is online joining me tonight just for taking some time out of your busy schedules to learn about scleral lens hygiene. I know it's not the most exciting topic out there, but it's definitely something that I think we need to touch upon. Um, as a professor at the University of Houston, I wish I had more time to spend on solutions with my students as well. And so hopefully at the end of this hour, we will all walk away with a better understanding of the various solutions out there that our scleral lens patients can use and just provide better patient care in this area. Because, you know, in all honesty, our patients are really confused. If any of you are like me and can't sleep at night, you follow the Keratoconus group on Reddit, you will see all kinds of questions about solutions pop up all the time. And a lot of times these patients are actually asking other patients for advice. And it can be kind of scary reading some of these recommendations like store your lenses in saline or tap water or just skip lens disinfection entirely, right? Thank the Lord we have one patient down here who is like the voice of reason who's telling them, hey, go reach out to your doctor rather than just, you know, taking online advice. And so this all tells me that we as a profession can do better when it comes to patient management and that scleral lens hygiene is just a really confusing process. And we'll circle back to this slide at the very end of the lecture. Now, first and foremost, we have to recognize that scleral lenses are made of modern GP materials. So fluorosilicone acrylate polymers that just naturally have a you know, lower surface tension. They tend to reduce deposits and they have pretty decent surface wettability, right? We also have to remember that scleral lenses, they're really prescribed primarily for daily wear and our patients shouldn't be sleeping in their lenses. They should be cleaning and disinfecting nightly. There are definitely some times where we will prescribe overnight wear, but those are very specialized cases and I'm not really gonna go over that in today's lecture. Now, if we think about the overall cleaning process, we want solutions that will help remove surface deposits, disinfect the lenses, right, to prevent incidents of microbial keratitis and enhance surface wettability. Otherwise, patients might experience poor visual performance or even lens discomfort might be kind of lacking. Lastly, scleral lenses, they're very different from other lens modalities in that we need some type of filling solution to serve as that cushion between the lens and the eye. And this filling solution is incredibly important because these lenses are gonna be worn for many, many hours. They exhibit very little tear exchange. And so whatever we put between the lens and the eye, it's gotta be gentle and not harm that ocular surface. Now, if we lay out the order of operations, immediately after lens removal, we would want to clean the lenses, then disinfect them, 
we would want to rinse them off thoroughly, fill them with our special filling solution, and then put the lens on the eye. So let's first tackle step one and two, cleaning and disinfecting. Here, you have to decide between two major groups, right? You have to decide between whether you want to prescribe a classic two bottle system for your patient, or if maybe a multi-purpose product will suffice, okay? And so when we talk about a classic two bottle system, there's usually one bottle for cleaning and another bottle for soaking and conditioning. And this might be a little bit too complicated for patients when we compare it to a one bottle multi-purpose solution that does it all. However, there are arguments out there that a two bottle system may be more effective, especially for those who tend to suffer from front surface deposits on their lenses. So let's dig into this classic two bottle system a little bit more. That first bottle is usually our daily cleaner in the two bottle process. It's used immediately after lens removal with the intention of cleaning and preparing your lenses for disinfection. Uh, its main job is really to loosen and remove the deposits. Uh, it also will help you get rid of debris and any microorganisms that may have accumulated on the lens surface throughout the day. Remember, this daily cleaner does not actually disinfect the lens. It just helps prepare the lens for disinfection and may help with lens wettability as well. There are several different types of daily cleaners out there and it is important that we recommend one that won't damage our patient's scleral lenses. So first and foremost, abrasive daily cleaners. Abrasive daily cleaners generally contain some type of silica gel bead or particle that acts as the abrasive to buff away deposits, right? So these beads are mixed with surfactants and viscosity agents that will help clean the lens and lubricate the cleaning process. Traditionally, these cleaners are more effective on lower DK, like early generation GP lenses, because those were the lenses that tended to have a lot of protein deposits. Newer abrasive cleaners will actually utilize smaller diameter abrasive particles. And even though these particles are technically less abrasive because they're smaller in diameter, you still have to be really careful when cleaning higher DKGP materials because these particles can scratch the surface and actually induce minus power over time um, by changing the center thickness of the lens, by reducing that center thickness because those particles will just rub away plastic. So because of this, I usually do not recommend any milky or abrasive cleaners to my scleral lens patients. One interesting thing that I did come across when researching the material for this lecture is that Abrasive cleaners are actually contraindicated for use with any GP lenses that are plasma treated. And I feel like plasma treatment is almost an industry standard at this point. So this, this was very surprising to me. And then of course, these abrasive cleaners are definitely not compatible with any lenses that have been coated with Hydropeg. So if we think about our scleral lens patients and the classic two bottle system, I'm really only considering non-abrasive daily cleaners and extra strength cleaners that are available on the market for my patients to use, okay? So non-abrasive daily cleaners, these tend to utilize surfactants or basically soaps, right? That have hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. And so these little soap particles are going to surround the pesky contaminants. So the proteins and the lipids and the makeup, all of that. The little soap particles are gonna surround them and form a little missile. And once it's surrounded, that missile can then be rinsed away with the rest of the solution. And so it's really important when your patients are using these non-abrasive cleaners to truly rub their lenses to the point where you can see soapy bubbles because it's a soap. And we really need to, that friction. We're relying on it to successfully remove all those pesky front surface deposits. And so that's like one tip that I usually tell my patients, just keep rubbing till it's soapy. If we look through the instructions on these daily cleaners that are non-abrasive, typically they all are kind of the similar in the sense that they want you to put a few drops on either side of the lens, rub gently for 20 to 30 seconds, right? Then rinse the lens thoroughly with tap water before soaking. And so when I read through that, I'm like, oh, tap water, like, oh my gosh, right? Um, 
historically, I understand that many GP wearers were taught to rinse off daily cleaners with tap water. I personally don't recommend this to my patients because there's always that risk of microbial infections from acanthamoeba. And so even though many daily cleaners still mention rinsing with water in their instructions, I will ask my patients to avoid using tap water if, if possible. And so once they're done rinsing off that cleaner, then they should be soaking in some type of disinfecting or storing solution. Here, I have a little table of just the different abrasive and non-abrasive daily cleaners available on the market. GP cleaners can have preservatives or be preservative free. I personally don't think it really matters as much for my patients because I really expect them to rinse their lenses quite thoroughly before soaking in a soaking solution anyways. So I don't expect that GP cleaner to really come into contact with my patient's eye. Now, again, because scleral lenses are made of higher DKGP materials that may be more sensitive to these harsher cleaning agents, I usually will recommend the non-abrasive cleaners down at the bottom of this table. And just remember, none of these are compatible with hydropeg coated lenses. Alcohol-based extra strength cleaners are the other daily cleaner available. These tend to be compatible with both GPs and soft contact lenses. And these cleaners contain surfactants mixed with isopropyl alcohol. It was, isopropyl alcohol has really strong antimicrobial effects and works really well in getting rid of mucus and lipids. So think like makeups and lotions, right? Now, because this solution uses isopropyl alcohol, it is really important to rinse the lens really well with either some type of saline or multipurpose solution prior to storage. These extra strength cleaners tend to be self-preserved and the manufacturer actually recommend using this type of solution either on a daily or weekly basis. However, some practitioners have mentioned that with continuous use of these alcohol-based cleaners, they do see some GP surface damage. So maybe just start your patient on a weekly basis of this cleaner and then just go up if they need more protein deposit removal. When we look at what is available on the market, these are all essentially the same. I believe uh, Miraflow was the original and then it briefly became unavailable and that kind of left a little void for all of these other solutions to fill. And technically I would categorize these as non-abrasive alcohol-based cleaners. However, if any of you go to the Miraflow website, you'll actually see that it says somewhere it, like that this is like a very, very fine abrasive that cleans by polishing the front and back of the lens in the palm of the hand. However, when I spoke with the manufacturer, they think what the website is referring to is a chloronic, which goes in as a solid during the manufacturing process, but isn't actually considered a real particle and is not actually abrasive when used for lens cleaning. And so they would consider this as still non-abrasive cleaners. If we look at the instructions for these alcohol-based cleaners, they kind of all say the same thing as well. Apply one to two drops on either side of the lens before gently rubbing and then rinse with sterile saline before soaking. The instructions for lens fresh is a little bit different if that's the one your patient ends up getting because this solution is actually marketed for use with biocolors. And biocolors is a soft tinted prosthetic lens. So they actually recommend an additional round of rubbing and rinsing that I don't think is really needed for our scleral lens patients. Another important note to make is so far, everything we have discussed should have a red cap to warn your patients, don't put this directly in your eye, it's gonna really burn. Now, Miraflow might be the only one that doesn't have a red cap, but does have this red plastic warning label. And um, I'm not totally sure if they recently redesigned their packaging to include a red cap, but that's something that I would make sure my patients knew so that they don't do not put Miraflow directly in the eye because it will definitely burn. Okay. Before we move on to discussing 
conditioning solutions, I did want to take a moment to talk about plasma treatment. Because I think there is still quite a bit of confusion, especially when you talk to the labs, they think we kind of don't understand plasma treatment. So plasma treatment is not really a lens coating. It's more of a treatment process. And this process is designed to help create a clean, wettable GP surface. What these lab manufacturers are doing is they will take a finished GP lens and put it in this chamber and they will just bombard it with high energy radio waves in this oxygen rich environment. And so these oxygen particles will actually strike the surface of the lens to help remove any residual debris from the manufacturing process. And then at the same time, these iron particles will also, not iron, excuse me, these oxygen particles will also ionize the hydrophobic lens surface to create a more hydrophilic environment. And so that means we're gonna see this GP surface attract more liquids, it will repel proteins, bacteria, and other contaminants, right? And so plasma treatment really does help enhance initial GP comfort, but you gotta remember that over time, the effect will decrease naturally, okay? I mean, the surface cleaning is definitely temporary. The altered surface structure where we change the ionization, that may be a little more permanent and can last for you know a few weeks or months. Um, as I mentioned earlier, abrasive cleaners should not be used on plasma treated lenses. And when it comes to the alcohol based cleaners that I had just mentioned, there's kind of mixed reports there. So some think that the alcohol cleaners might cause that plasma treatment to decline a little more rapidly. But overall, like the alcohol cleaners don't actually damage the lens. And so it's not like terrible, but maybe just don't do it as often. Um, when I talk to the lab manufacturers, they also say that they can replasma treat a lens, but you don't want to do it too often. Like if you replasma treat a lens like three or four times, it can actually start to become brittle. And so maybe like just one or two times at the most, but talk to your lab manufacturer to find out. Okay. Now back to our two bottle system. So after using your different cleaners available, your scleral lens patients should soak their lenses in some type of soaking or conditioning solution. These solutions do contain preservatives and they are designed to disinfect the lens. They also help by temporarily enhancing surface wettability and they will improve overall lens comfort. Now, instructions for your soaking solutions usually say something like clean your lenses first, rinse them really well, place them in a clean contact lens case and fill with fresh soaking solution and just let it sit for a minimum certain period of time or let it sit overnight. Afterwards, once it's done soaking, the lens should be ready for the patient to wear. These solutions are technically safe to go directly in the patient's eye, but that's for your corneal GP patients who will experience rapid tear exchange as they wear their lens, right? In the case of our scleral lens patients, they do not have much tear exchange. And so it's really important to thoroughly rinse off these conditioning solutions before the lens goes on. So here's a little list of the different available GP conditioning solutions on the market right now, along with their minimum recommended soaking times. They're all pretty much four hours at a minimum. And I've also listed the preservatives just in case your patient is sensitive to one of these ingredients and may be accidentally trapping the solution under the lens and, and you can't figure out you know, what's causing their discomfort. Now, before we move on to our multi-purpose solutions, there is this small little subcategory that kind of walks like a fine line between being a daily cleaner and almost being a multi-purpose solution. And that would be our combination cleaning, soaking and disinfecting solutions. And so these solutions are designed to clean and disinfect. Why I say it kind of walks that fine line is because it could be used as a daily cleaner, or it could be used after a daily cleaner as like your soaking solution. Um, during overnight storage, these solutions will loosen lens debris 
And again, you have to rinse it off really, really well. The solution is incredibly painful if it comes into contact with your patient's eye. Some people say it burns even more than peroxide and your patient's eye will be injected for a few days. Now, these combination solutions are also not compatible with Hydropeg, but I will consider utilizing this in place of a traditional soaking solution if my patient is a pretty heavy depositor, okay? And so again, you can use this in place of the daily cleaner. So you can rub the lens with this solution, make sure you create suds, right? Because we need those surfactants to work. Um, and then once you're done causing all that friction to the lens, then you can rinse it off before soaking in that same combination solution overnight. In the morning, just make sure that your patient's lenses are rinsed really, really well before patient starts to apply and put the lens on. Fortunately, to keep things simple, there's really only two combination cleaning, soaking, and disinfection solutions available on the market. The soaking times are slightly different and the preservatives are slightly different as well. And so if you need one of these, that those are the two out there, okay? And again, not for direct application to that ocular surface because it really will burn. And last but not least in our cleaning and overnight storage options, we have our one bottle multi-purpose solutions that we can use to clean and store our lenses in overnight. I definitely do recommend a one bottle solution to my patients who maybe have a history of poor compliance with a traditional two bottle system, or maybe they're just not a very like heavy front surface depositor, so they don't need all that extra cleaning. A one bottle system is definitely simpler and more convenient, right? And it can actually be cheaper than a two bottle system as well. So if money is tight, that's something we can think about. Um, the instructions, they do kind of vary. Uh, in my mind, I tend to separate my multi-purpose solutions into two large groups. Uh, first group would be my hydrogen peroxide-based solutions, and then my non-hydrogen peroxide-based multi-purpose solutions. And, you know, both groups are, are good, but we have to recognize that hydrogen peroxide solutions just do a better job of cleaning. They are capable of, you know, penetrating microbial biofilms, and they just have a greater ability to kill acanthamoeba, so they just provide a deeper clean. And hydrogen peroxide solutions, they are preservative free. So if my patient has, you know, bad allergies or eye sensitivities, that's definitely a solution that I will think about, you know, prescribing to my patient. Now, another thing to think about is how effective are the multipurpose solutions, because there have been reports that multipurpose solutions may not be as effective over time. Most of these solutions have a recommended discard date of 90 days after opening. One study actually found that these solutions were less effective, but still satisfactory. So they still worked, right? But towards the end of the 90 day period, they just weren't as effective as when we opened it from day one. They also found that these solutions were less effective if stored in a refrigerator at 39 degrees Fahrenheit or four degrees Celsius for international friends. And um, some were actually not effective against acanthamoeba, even when the lenses were soaked for the recommended time period. And so, you know, combine some of these thoughts with patient compliance, right? Because we always have to remember that patient compliance, you know, plays a big role in what we recommend. And so if I talk to my patients and I ask them, the majority of them do not actually rub or rinse their lenses when using a one bottle system. However, if you look at the instructions, pretty much all of them do recommend either rubbing and or rinsing the GP lens before or after soaking. And I understand that rubbing isn't always required by the manufacturer. And sometimes not rubbing actually has some benefits, right? Like you have less lens warpage over time if you don't rub your GPs. But for some of these no rub solutions to actually work, patients kind of have to understand that a good rinsing of that lens may be what determines the effectiveness of that product. And so if your patient is skipping both like the rub and the rinse part, 
they could be putting themselves at risk for an eye infection or just having a lot of protein deposits because they're just skipping steps, okay? And surprisingly, there aren't that many multi-purpose GP solutions on the market. Um, they're pretty much all listed right here with their preservatives and the recommended rub rinse and soaking instructions. Some are before the soak, some are after the soak. One interesting solution that I do want to point out is Menicare Plus from Menicon. So this solution has a minimum soaking time of five minutes, which is by far the shortest soaking time out of all of the listed multi-purpose solutions. So and also what's kind of nice too, the little stars or asterisks, we finally have some HydraPeg compatible solutions. So let's take a minute and talk about HydraPeg since we finally have some solutions that are compatible, okay? So HydraPeg based um, from tangible science, right? This is a true lens coating. This is a lens coating made of 90% water polyethylene glycol or PEG. And this polymer mixture is essentially permanently bonded to the surface of the contact lens. And by bonding to that contact lens, it's gonna shield the surface of the lens from the tear film and the ocular surface. And it will help minimize friction and prevent deposits from forming. The goal of course is, you know, improve lens wettability improve your patient's tear breakup time if possible, and then just make the lens more comfortable. If we look at some of the studies that you know wanted to see the benefits of HydraPeg, Chandra Mickles and her colleagues, they took lenses that were coated in HydraPeg and some that were not and fit them into patients who had dry eye. And they just wanted to see if there was any difference. And interestingly enough, not surprisingly, but interestingly enough, Patients with the HydraPeg coated scleral lenses actually reported superior comfort and improved dry eye symptoms compared to those with untreated lenses. Another cool thing they found was that there were less ocular surface changes and less foggy vision in the patients that were wearing the HydraPeg coated lenses. And so some of the things that I'm going to keep in mind too, though, I mean, that all those are all great advantages. There are a few disadvantages that I have seen in clinic. Uh, one of them being that this coating is so slippery. I mean, it's it's designed to make your lens more wettable. And I'm sure some of you have handled a HydraPeg coated lens before. And it can almost feel like a watermelon seed effect where if I squeeze the lens too hard, it's gonna just shoot across the room, right? And hit the wall or something. And so sometimes patients do report that extra slipperiness and they have a hard time handling their lens. Another disadvantage that I kind of think about maybe is like the lack of compatible solutions because we all have those patients who are very specific and can only use certain products and refuse to use anything else. Now, the problem with using a non-compatible solution with a HydraPeg lens is you can actually damage the HydraPeg coating and that's going to limit the durability of that coating. And so these lenses are not supposed to come in contact with water or non-compatible uh, solutions. And at the school, one of the issues I run into with the students is they don't always realize that I ordered a lens with HydraPeg. And so when it comes time to dispense the lenses, you know, they're so used to cleaning with red cap and then, you know, cleaning with blue cap and then rinsing the lens. And so by the time they put that lens onto the patient's eye, that coating is already kind of damaged. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is a lens that's already coated with HydraPeg actually doesn't need any extra cleaning. You can just take it out of the case and dispense it to the patient. Don't expose it to anything else. Um, because if you do, you risk damaging the coating even before the patient starts wearing the lens. Other disadvantages maybe would be if your patient has a spare pair of lenses that has HydraPeg on it, you cannot store that lens dry. So you would want to store it in some type of, again, HydraPeg compatible multi-purpose solution. And you'd have to change out that multi-purpose solution every month or so um, to make sure that it's still disinfecting properly. And, and that can be a little bit of a hassle to remember to do. And yes, do not, please do not, um, do not 
exposed to tap water or clean them or anything. So these are the recommended cleaning solutions for lenses that are coated in Hydropeg at the top. Down below are all the other products that you really shouldn't be exposing that lens to. When it comes to re-wetting drops, essentially any re-wetting drop that's approved for contact lenses should be compatible with that Hydropeg coating. And to kind of make things simple, Tangible Science also came out with their own solution called Tangible Clean that your patients can use if they get confused about what they should or shouldn't use. Now, Tangible Clean is a daily cleaning and disinfecting solution, multi-purpose, that does it all. It's designed to protect the Hydropeg coating, and it's actually FDA approved for all types of lenses. So we're talking GPs, soft lenses, hybrids, sclerals, all of it. Uh, what they uh, describe is that, you know, the solution is a lot thinner than your traditional GP solutions. And because it's thinner, it actually rinses off easier and will leave less preservative on the surface of the lens. And so by being able to rinse your lenses off really well, you can potentially avoid any type of, you know, ocular toxicities or irritations that may occur when preservatives are stuck on the lens and other problems like lens fogging that may be associated with thicker cleaning solutions getting trapped under the scleral lens that actually might um, be decreased with cleaning tangible clean. Now, another solution that I strongly recommend, I love hydrogen peroxide based solutions because they are incredibly effective, but still very gentle on the eye. I do have patients who do just fine in brown bottle peroxide, but there will be times when I recommend brand name solution if they can afford it because of the added surfactants that will help loosen debris and deposits, right? Also, Patients with dry eye, poor wetting lenses, or if they're experiencing like contact related dryness, they actually might benefit more from these surfactants because usually surfactants will have, you know, intrinsic wetting properties. So that might help with their lens discomfort. I also like to recommend hydrogen peroxide solutions to patients who have questionable hygiene or poor compliance with solutions because studies have found that patients tend to be more compliant when they are using a hydrogen peroxide based solution. And then we also already mentioned how effective hydrogen peroxide based solutions can be as a cleaner and that bubbling reaction that occurs with the platinum disc kind of just like does all the work for you, which is nice. Um, but there are times when I won't recommend a hydrogen peroxide solution. And that's usually for my patients who maybe are occasional contact lens wearers, because we all know after the neutralization is done, you're left with a preservative free saline that, you know, over time, if you don't change that solution, it can allow organisms to survive and grow. And so for the people who don't use their lenses very often, they might be better off just using a multi-purpose solution. There's also that neutralization time that we have to think about, right? So a lot of these solutions require four hours or six hours of soaking at a minimum. This rule kind of applies more for your patients with soft lenses because that peroxide will soak into that soft lens and it will burn if the patient puts it on the eye. Um, for our scleral lens patients, technically that solution will not soak into GP materials. And so if your patient was really in a pickle and had to put their lenses on, you know, before the four or six hour soaking period, if they just thoroughly rinse really, really well and get all that peroxide off, they should be able to wear their lenses. Although just remember, remind your patients like, hey, if you don't soak for the proper amount of time, your solution might not be as effective in killing microorganisms. And so that's one thing. So I don't want them to do it all the time if, if they don't have to, right? If we read the instructions, these peroxide-based solutions will either tell your patients to rub and or rinse the lenses prior to soaking. Just make sure you warn your patients that their fingers will get slightly discolored. These are my fingers actually, after I was rubbing some lenses with peroxide and the white stuff does kind of go away. It does burn a little bit, but it's not terrible. And another thing we have to keep in mind is the size of the basket that these cases come with. So 
Sometimes that basket might just be too small, especially if you're fitting these larger, big diameter scleral lenses, okay? So the traditional basket that comes with your peroxide solutions should be able to handle up to like a 16 millimeter scleral lens diameter. As the lenses get larger, your patients can still use that basket, but you kind of run the risk of your patients like pushing too hard or squishing too hard and they can crack or snap the lens. If you're worried about your patient doing that, I would visit the dry eye shop website and you can actually purchase these larger pros disinfection cases. And these cases can actually hold lenses up to like 22 millimeters in diameter. So as big as you can get, right? The only issue you run into with these baskets is that they don't come with that platinum disc. And so what you have to do is you have to ask your patients to remove the disc from the traditional case and attach it onto the pros disinfection case. And it's actually not that hard. Like if I can do it, anyone can do it. So you can kind of see the size difference, right? Between the pros case and your traditional case, it's way bigger. Um, I'm just taking a normal clear care case, grabbing some paper towels. The trick here is you wanna pull it straight out while you're twisting. If you bend the catalyst in any direction, it's gonna cause it to snap. And then that little plastic nub will come off with it. And so if that happens, um, that'll make it you know, not able to put onto the pros case. And so just keep twisting and pulling straight out. And then after a few turns, it should come right off. And then once it comes off, you're pretty much ready to attach it to the pros case on the bottom. I usually tell my patients that the disc is good for about 90 uses or about three months. And so they should expect to have to replace that catalytic disc like four times a year. If you read the actual packet insert from the clear care packets and whatnot, they will say it's good for a hundred uses. I kind of just round down a little bit because there is a lot more hydrogen peroxide solution going into these pros cases. And I've never scientifically like, you know, done the research to find out if 90 uses really is how long the disc works for. But if my patients do report any stinging and whatnot, then I just tell them, hey, it's, it's time to change that disc out. Like you've had it for too long. Okay. Now, these are the only hydrogen peroxide solutions that specifically say they are compatible with GP lenses. There are instructions that will say like, hey, these, these actually are instructions specifically for GPs. So if you kind of read it, ClearCare Plus is the only one that says don't rub at all. Just do a five second rinse and then soak for six hours. If you look at the instructions for ClearCare Original and PeroxiClear, both of them actually say rub the lens in peroxide first and then rinse it in peroxide and then go ahead and soak it. And then of course, if your patient's lenses sit for more than seven days, you got to replace that solution. And we have two of these that are compatible with HydroPEG, which is kind of nice. Now I went into like this deep dive to look at all the different hydrogen peroxide based solutions available. And shockingly, there's a lot, I couldn't find any more than this, but there might be more. This is just for the United States. Um, none of these here specifically say they are compatible with GPs, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if my patients showed up using any of these solutions and I'm really not expecting them to, you know, have any issues cleaning their sclerals in, in that type of solution. So after cleaning and disinfecting, we are now ready to rinse our scleral lenses, right? And so based on the manufacturer instructions, our rinsing options usually will include tap water, right? Or preserved saline, preservative-free saline. And then lastly, you could just use your filling solution and rinse with that and then just fill with the same thing too. Now, we kind of talked about rinsing with tap water already. My main goal is to rinse and remove any residual soaking solution, okay? I don't want any of that trapped under my patient's lens, but I also don't really want them rinsing with tap water. I don't tell my patients to do it because I don't want to think about the risk of a canthamoeba. I don't need to see that in my clinic, okay? So the main decisions I'm thinking about are, do I want to go preservative-free or preserve saline? 
And do I want to go with a multi-purpose versus like a single use of vial of some sort? Now, there's a lot of multi-dose saline bottles on the market, and most of them are preserved. The only one that's not preserved would be Purilens at the very bottom. When it comes to these rinsing solutions, I truly don't super mind if my patient use a, uses a preserved saline. I know this stuff can get really expensive and I just want them to rinse their lenses really well before filling. I usually will tell them to uh, grab their filling solution and then just give that a quick rinse, you know, rinse off the rinsing solution before filling. That way, whatever preserved saline that was on the lens hopefully should be rinsed off quite quickly. Piri lens is interesting in that, you know, it's the only one that's preservative free. There is a buffer in this solution and it really can be used for both rinsing and filling. It comes in a large multi-dose bottle and it's pretty much the only filling solution that kind of comes in one of these larger multi-dose bottles, okay? If we think about our other options, right? I'm really thinking also, you know, for filling and whatnot, do I want a preservative-free buffered saline versus a unbuffered saline? And then of course, we have some other things that we just don't use as frequently. So preservative-free artificial tears or even autologous serum tears, okay? And so continuing with PiriLens and all these other salines here, when I'm thinking about a filling solution, my number one goal is it has to be preservative free because this is what's going to be against the eye all day long. So my first decision is, do I want to go with a buffer or an unbuffered solution? Some filling solutions have a buffer to help maintain this near neutral pH, okay? The normal pH level of human tears will range anywhere from 6.5 to like 7.6 and the mean value is roughly around a seven, so perfectly neutral, okay? Some patients will strongly prefer a buffered solution and will feel that it's more comfortable, while others will think that the buffer is more irritating and they prefer non-buffered. It's really hard to say, you guys. I will just usually give my patients samples of buffered and unbuffered and just let them try it. And if they feel more comfortable in one or the other, then great. They've kind of helped me make my decision. Uh, there are a few studies out there that have looked at the pH in various filling solutions. And what they have found is that there is a pretty wide range of pH and the most acidic samples were the modudose saline and the adipac unit dose vials. Um, they had the widest range and, and the largest standard deviations when it came to pH. And that's kind of to be expected, right? Because both of those solutions aren't really FDA approved for scleral lens use, unlike the other, other ones that we have here. And so once we decide on buffered or unbuffered, then we have to think about multi-dose versus single use file, okay? And so we actually did a study looking at the, you know, the hygienic properties, I guess, of these multi-dose bottles. And we took Piri lens bottles from our patients and tested them for microbes. And we found a lot of different microbes, some of them scarier than others, but essentially in almost all the bottles, many of the bottles, there was a lot of contamination. And even if the bottle was open for just one day, that bottle could still be contaminated. And they recommend you toss the bottle out every 15 minutes, 15 days or so. And one nice thing though, is despite there having this high contamination rate in these bottles, we don't see a super high rate of keratitis among our patients, which is fortunate. And so doing this study definitely has changed my thought process when I'm recommending multi-dose bottles because PiriLens definitely is one of the more popular solutions out there that patients use to fill their lenses with. But if I have a patient that has poor hygiene or a compromised um, like epithelium, I'm probably gonna go more with a single use vial, just knowing that it's a little bit cleaner possibly than a large four ounce bottle that they would use over and over again. And so 
this is a nice little table where I've just compiled all of the single use vials available for filling scleral lenses. Most of them are FDA approved. And when we look at the pH, most of them fall within that normal pH range of human tears. They are all preservative free. Uh, neutrophil and sclerophyll both contain a buffer while the rest of them do not. And it is worth you know, spending a little time talking about neutrophil because it's slightly different from the other filling solutions in that uh, it is specifically designed for scleral lens wearers and actually contains five essential electrolytes to help contribute to a healthier ocular environment. So these five electrolytes are all naturally found in normal tear films. And so some people say that using you know, only sodium electrolytes can potentially provide stress on the corneal epithelial cells. And neutrophil is actually designed to minimize that potential stress by including these ions. And again, this really varies from patient to patient, but some have actually reported less midday fogging and increased wear time when filling with neutrophil. Now, last but not least, we have our additional supplies that your patients may benefit from, okay? So these include our enzymatic cleaners, Progen, Tangible Boost, and some other new exciting products that just hit the market not too long ago. And so first up, enzymatic cleaners, these can help remove stubborn deposits. If your patients are using Boston Simplus, there's actually a built-in daily protein remover already in that solution. If your patient is using something else, they can incorporate this Boston one-step enzymatic cleaner into their cleaning regimen. This comes as a liquid little vial. You just twist it open and you add two drops into the lens case while your lenses are soaking. And so this product works really in two different ways. Because it's an enzyme, it will help lyse bonds within protein molecules and break them into smaller pieces. And it will also help reduce adherence of protein molecules to the contact lens surface. So it'll help you keep your lenses cleaner. Now, after you soak, you would want to rinse your lenses really well before filling and putting on per usual. Uh, this is a preservative free protein remover and they are designed to be used on a weekly basis. Super Cleanse from Alcon was the other protein remover available, but from my research, it seems like they've been discontinued and I haven't been able to find anywhere where you can really buy it. Now, Progent, made by Menicon, is another one of my favorite products in the clinic. This solution works extremely quickly to clean lenses. It will loosen and remove stubborn surface proteins after just a short 30-minute soak, and you don't even have to rub the lenses. It's so nice. Another really amazing thing is after five minutes, it will disinfect against all organisms on the lens. So we're talking bacteria, mold, yeast, virus, acanthamoeba, it just zaps it all. And so how Menicon Progen works is you have your two little vials, right? You kind of feel like a mad scientist when, when you mix them together. So you mix them together in the case, you let it sit for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes is over, you kind of toss that solution down the drain, and then you have a little rinsing vial that comes with the progen. You fill your little progen case up with the rinsing vial, put the cap back on, and then you shake your lenses vigorously to rinse them for about 20 seconds or so. After that, you're supposed to disinfect the lenses in multi-purpose solution before use. And the traditional cases are designed for GPs. Just know that Menicon also came out with a larger diameter uh, scleral lens case that can hold a 23 millimeter diameter lens if needed. Now, Progen is definitely not compatible with Hydropeg. It will completely strip it off of that lens. What is compatible with Hydropeg and looks very similar to Progen is the new Tangible Boost solution from Tangible Science. So this is a monthly at-home treatment designed to rebuild that Hydropeg coating. So earlier, we mentioned how the durability of that coating may be limited, especially if your patient is mishandling the lenses, right? So they're trying to counteract that with this solution. And it's just like Progen. It comes with a solution A and a solution B. And you guys, I really tried my hardest to figure out what 
solution A and B are, but they wouldn't tell me it's proprietary. And so anyways, you just mix the two together in the little case, let it soak for 30 minutes as well. Afterwards, you will uh, dump out that mixture. You grab a multi-purpose solution that is HydroPeg compatible, and then you would put that into the case and then shake it up for 20 seconds, just like the Menacon Progen. After the 20 seconds, you take your sclerals out and then you would soak and disinfect in a HydroPeg compatible multi-purpose solution as well before use, okay? Another nice thing is this tangible boost, it's very new, but it's also only available by prescription. So your patients cannot just, you know, purchase this over the counter from Amazon. Now, the last product that I wanted to talk about that may benefit your scleral lens patients is the contact lens hand prep spray by Vibrant View from Visionary Optics. So this spray is very simple. It's hypochlorous acid combined with water and that's it. So this acid is a naturally incur occurring molecule. It's actually made by our body's own immune systems and it's very effective in fighting against infections and inflammation. And some studies actually report that it's like 50 times more effective than bleach. But because it's naturally occurring, this molecule is considered non-toxic, non-irritating and hypoallergenic. So we're talking safe for kids, adults, children, like pets, right? And it's also very gentle on the skin despite being a very effective cleanser. Another interesting thing too, independent testing of this hand spray has found that it is effective against COVID-19 and acanthamoeba. And, you know, right now our patients are all very concerned about hygiene. So this might just be the product to help them feel a little bit safer. They do recommend using the spray after washing with soap or in place of hand washing when soap and water is not available. Uh, because it's natural and non-toxic, it should be safe for patients who wear GPs or soft lenses and shouldn't cause any burning or stinging. Now, we have to get all of this information to our patients. We need to really beef up our patient education because remember, most patients are not compliant. So I will ask my patients to bring their solutions with them to every visit so I can see what they're using. And then I kind of ask them how they're using it. Don't be afraid to retrain your patients as needed and really make it a point to educate why you are using specific solutions instead of just telling them not to use things. I also love providing verbal and written information because it's a lot to remember. I can't expect my patients to remember all of this. And so one of my favorite handouts from the Scleral Lens Education Society, it's totally free to our members and membership is free. We worked with Rebecca from the Dry Eye Shop on this handout and you can really tailor this to your individual patient. It says clearly what they should be using, um, the purpose of each solution. It also lists like, you know, alternative solutions that your patient might be able to use if they're in a bind, right? It's also like, you can say, my lenses are coated with HydroPeg and my, you know, plungers should be replaced every three months, that type of thing. And so it's just a very helpful handout that I give all the time. AOCLE.org also has a great one here that's very to the point. It reminds your patients of how to wash their ha hands and how to clean, soak, and what their filling solution is. If your patients ever struggle finding solutions, besides Amazon, the Dry Eye Shop and MyEyesupply.com carry all of these solutions as well. The only one they don't carry is a tangible boost because that requires a prescription. And so coming back full circle to this slide here, you know, for this first patient that forgot to disinfect their lenses with clear care last night, and now they don't know what to do. Um, we have people telling them, you know, just put it in saline, or sometimes I just don't disinfect at all. I would recommend a quick rub and rinse in clear care or multi-purpose solution, even if it's not truly disinfecting for the recommended period of time it would still be better than just rinsing in saline, especially if the patient absolutely must wear their lenses, right? Now, in the second scenario here, this patient, you know, it says, I use clear care original for overnight storage, but, um, you know, every now and then he wants to take his lenses out for two to four hours and he puts it in BNL conditioning solution, but he doesn't know if, they're, if that's even okay to use on sclerals, right? And so he's like, 
can I use something else? My eyes are really sensitive. I mean, in this case, if he wants to use his usual clear care for the two to four hours that his lenses aren't on, that's still better than nothing. And he can just rinse well with saline because that peroxide is not going to soak into the GP or just keep using the Boston conditioning solution. It's technically disinfecting and again, better than him just storing in saline or tap water. This patient is talking about his clear care case and how after disinfecting, it's like empty. What this makes me think is maybe he's not rinsing or rubbing his lenses prior to soaking. So it's just really gunky or he could benefit from like the larger pros case that will have more room for more liquid and more bubbling space. And so I would definitely try to talk to him about switching to a larger case or rubbing and rinsing prior to soaking. This last one's tough. This patient's in Kuwait and he just can't get any solutions that are designed for GPs and is storing in tap water. I would say, man, okay, 3% peroxide or even any soft lens solution would be better than tap water in this case, especially tap water in Kuwait. I have no idea what the conditions are like out there. But um, yeah, hopefully you picked up some tidbits today about different ways you can keep your scleral lenses clean and we'll attempt to answer any questions there may be. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, thank you. Bye.